Hello, this is Alan Franciscus from the Hepatitis C Support Project in our websites, the HCV and HBV Advocate websites. And today I'm going to be talking about some clinical trial data that was released in August on telaprevir and HCV protease inhibitor. Now just to remind you, telaprevir is an HCV protease inhibitor that works by blocking the replication process of the hepatitis C virus. Last month I talked about two trials that were, the study results were released um, in telaprevir. One is the advanced trial and the other is the illuminate trial. And both of these trials um, looked at treating people with HCV genotype 1 who had never been treated before. So you may want to go back and check those out. Um, this particular trial I'm going to talk about with this video update is called the REALIZE tr trial. And the REALIZE study is a study looking at treating people with telaprevir, pegylated interferon, and ribavirin in people who have previously been treated with pegylated interferon and ribavirin but who did not achieve an SVR. Um, these results are top-line results, and it's important to know the top-line results don't give us the whole complete picture, but what it does give us is a really good starting point, and as more information is released, we'll be giving you this information in video updates and on our website and newsletter. Um, in this realized study, again, they looked at people with HCV genotype 1 who had had a previous course of therapy with pegylated interferon and ribavirin, but did not achieve an SVR. And an SVR is defined as um, going undetectable, of course, during treatment. And if you're still undetectable 24 weeks after the last dose of medicine, that is defined as an SVR or sustained virological response. And also it's known as a viral cure. And just to let you know, the information that I'm going to be presenting today is from the Vertex Company press release. Now looking at the patient population, while they didn't give us all the information, they gave us a couple of key components. So, for example, they gave us the viral load information, and it was um, released that 89% of people in this study had a high viral load, and that's defined as above um, 800,000 international units. Also, 26% of the patients in this study had cirrhosis. And I bring this up because both of those are negative predictors of treatment response. So, for example, if people have either of these, they're less likely to respond to therapy. It's also important to know that the um, genotype distribution by subclass was similar between uh, genotype 1A and 1B. Now, looking at the type of prior non-response, we have three definitions or three types, a relapser, a partial responder, and a null responder. Looking first at the relapser, that's defined as a person who's given, again, a previous course of therapy for at least 42 weeks, became viral load undetectable during treatment, but became viral load detectable, or that virus came back within that 24-week follow-up period, and that's a relapser. A partial responder is defined as a person who had received a two-log drop by week 12, but never went viral load undetectable by week 24. An example of that is, is, let's say somebody starts out at 15 million international units for their viral load. Um, if it goes down by two logs, it means that it goes down to 150,000. The last um, type of prior non-response is a null responder. And that's defined as a person who has less than a two log, who never has less than a two log drop in virus. Uh, the example would be a two log drop, again, 15 million down to 150,000. So um, a null responder would be a person who had a viral load that starts at 15 million but never goes below 150,000 IUs. Now, in all of these arms, they were compared to uh, the standard of care treatment, which is pegylated interferon in ribavirin. Now, note that in this study, they were looking at a leaded phase. So, for example, they were looking at one group it would have benefit them to have pegylated interferon and ribavirin four weeks prior to starting them on telaprevir, pegylated, and ribavirin. And what they actually found in the study was that the SVR results were similar across all treatment arms, regardless of lead-in or no lead-in. So for simplicity's sake, I'm actually going to be just combining all of those SVR rates. Now, looking at the dose of medication, um, for 12 weeks, people received telaprevir at 750 milligrams every eight hours, 
peglid interferon injected sub-Q once a week, and weight-based ribavirin was dosed twice a day. And this, this uh, was for 12 weeks. This was followed by peglid interferon and ribavirin um, for an additional 32 or 36 weeks. Now looking at the standard of care, standard of care is, is the standard of care, peglid interferon once a week and ribavirin weight-based for 48 weeks. There was also a placebo pill given um, to the people in the standard of care group uh, because they were trying to prevent any kind of bias from people knowing if they received the study drug or not. Looking at the overall SVR results, um, the SVR results were 65% overall in the telapavir containing arms compared to 17% in the group that received pegylated interferon or ribavirin standard of care. Now breaking it down by type of prior non-response, relapsers in the telapavir arms it was 86% SVR and then in the standard of care arm it was compared to there's a 24% SVR. In the partial responders, the SVR rate was 57% uh, compared to 15% in the standard of care arm. And last but not least, in the no responders, the SVR rates were 31% and the standard of care arm, it was 5%. So looking at the side effects, again, there wasn't a whole lot of information, but um, they reported that they were, um, the side effects were reported as mild to moderate in, in nature. Um, what's important to know, though, that the, no, is that the discontinuation rates were similar between all of the arms, including the arms that did not receive telaprevir. And this is important because it tells us that while there may be some additional side effects, they weren't enough to, to um, dictate for somebody to stop treatment or withdraw from treatment. Okay, so wrap this all up. So overall SVR rates were 65%, breaking it down by prior type of non-response, relapsers 86%, partial responders 57%, no responders 31%. Treatment duration in this clinical study was between 44 and 48 weeks, and it's important to know that telaprevir was not given for any, any longer of a period than 12 weeks. Now, Vertex has indicated that they hope to wrap up their application to the Food and Drug Administration uh, to apply for marketing approval, and the marketing approval is expected to be um, granted in 2011 or 2012. Now, if you're interested in this trial and the other trials on telaprevir, as well as prosepravir, check back online because we are putting together a very comprehensive top-line results of those two um, study drugs. And as we get more information, we will be updating you on that information. And um, it's been indicated that at the, the um, ASLD conference later this year, the, big, the biggest conference for, for liver disease, um, that there's going to be a lot more information released. So once again, thank you for visiting the HCV Advocate website. Um, please let us know if there's anything that, that we could help you with as far as information or education or any type of programs you would like to see us. Um, undertake. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.